Hey guys, it's Jonathan from Total Burrowhammer, and today we'll be going over the Make War Not Love uh, fixes and patch notes. So, let's get into it. There's only one fix that uh, is going to affect our multiplayer guys that I can see here, really. And that is, when single entity units are fighting in battle, they will no longer disengage so often, which replenish their charge bonus incorrectly. So that's going to make single entity units not so powerful, which I think is a good thing, especially for like the Tomb Kings. Besides that, we are getting a bunch of custom battle maps added to the quick battle mode. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can expect 8 more maps from the custom battle map pool. And we're also getting 3 completely new multiplayer maps from the, uh, from, I guess you can call this a little DLC. You actually gotta download it from the, uh, Steam store, so. Yeah, it's called something, something Isha. Anyway. Uh, so we're going to have a total of 11 new maps for multiplayer, so that's cool. We're also getting one new free-for-all map. Besides that, a bunch of replace the battle map environments for all these maps. You guys about that? Okay, balancing changes. So first we, first up is my Empire. Great Swords plus one bonus versus infantry. I like that. Empire Spearman with shields, minus 25 multiplayer cost. I like that. Halberdiers plus one melee attack. I like it. Flagellants and Tatter Souls, minus 3 base damage and plus 4 AP damage. Step in the right direction, but uh, let me go ahead and show y'all a game me and Dov had. And uh, let's go to the replays here. Actually, let's go to custom battle first, because I also want to show y'all that uh, it didn't say it there, but the Tatter Souls also got a slight cost decrease. I believe they were 900 before, so that, that's also good. But like I was saying, we did a test of the flight ones to see if they were actually useful now because they've just been uh, nerfed into the dirt. And we're testing all the flight ones against pretty much all the uh, Dark Elf infantry. So let me go ahead and just speed up here. And we got Hogneth Executioners over here, we got Witch Elves over here, we got Blackheart Crusaders, and we got the Leak Swords. We're just going to engage right across the line. And of course it's not going to be a perfect test, but uh, these guys aren't affected by leadership, so that should be pretty good. And as you can see here, the Flagellants, as expected, do terrible against the Harganeth Executioners. Uh, they trade, they can destroy Witch Elves, but uh, Black Heart Corsairs do trade really cost effectively with them, and even Bleak Swords beat them, who are much cheaper than them, so... Overall, I'd say uh, Flagellants are still nerfed into the ground and not worth bringing. I don't know why they were nerfed so hard and then also increased in price. I think the price increase definitely needs to be reverted. And uh, maybe Strength of the Penitent or whatever that thing is called also needs to be reverted. So let's go ahead and go back to the patch notes here. Pistol Ears plus 1 AP Missile Damage plus 4 Charge and plus 2 Melee Attack. Mm, again, a recurring theme in this is step in the right direction, but not enough. So, Pistolers will still probably be useless and not worth it. But, uh, yeah. So this is a good change. Way Watchers got plus one second reload time. Reduced projectile mass. Cavalry has an easier time catching the unit. Reduced accuracy. Mainly noticeable at max range against small targets. And Hawkish Precision reduced to plus 15% AP missile damage. So that's all good right there. Way Watchers were kind of in a overpowered state, and this should really help. Uh, this might be enough. I don't know. Sisters of the Thorn, plus 50 multiplayer cost. I think that's a good change. Uh, uh, what are they called? Wild Riders? They now cost the same as Wild Riders. Wild Riders have more unit models, and I think more health. Let's go ahead and check that out. Battles, custom battle, Wood Elves. So let's, uh, these guys now cost the same as these guys. And as you can see, Wild Riders have more health, more armor, more leadership, and more melee defense. But honestly, there wasn't a lot of times where you didn't want to take the Sisters of Thorn instead. Because the Sisters of Thorn have these two spells, this Shield of Thorns and the Curse of Anne right here. And how many model? What's the model difference, by the way? 45 to 36. So they have a few less models, and they have less health. But they also have 50% physical resistance and a poison missile damage. So it's a it was a clear choice to me, at least, that the Sisters of the Thorn were better. And it's good that they got a cost increase. I don't know. These guys do have more charge bonus, quite a bit more charge bonus. So maybe 
Maybe not. They do have that 20% fiscal resistance. You know what? They have frenzy as well. So maybe they do have a niche, actually. Now that I look at it again. Let's go ahead and go back to the patch notes. That's all. That's going to be all for the Wood Elves. The Foot Squires got plus one bonus versus infantry. That's great. Foot Squires suck. Battle Pergons plus one melee defense. That's great. Battle Pergons aren't great. Uh, Gretel Leak minus 50 multiplayer costs. I like that. Uh, personally, I never brought it myself because it really requires you to Death Star to get benefit from it. And I never Death Star Plutonia because I think that uh, that style of gameplay is boring. Graveguard with Great weapons got plus two bonus versus infantry. That's nice. Great fighters, great weapons were pretty cost ineffective, but uh, I mean, I guess they're supposed to be that way because of the mass healing with vampires have. But we'll see. Work air boys, heavy truck air boys, got uh, one of their missile damage changed to AP missile damage, so that's fine. The score herd minus one melee attack. That's good. I think they're still a bit too cost effective. Knights of the Realm got better, along with Pegasus Knights and Royal Pegasus Knights. All of them got plus. Two melee defense. Man arms with pole arms plus one bonus versus large. Dark shards with shields got a increase of plus 25 multiplayer cost, which I think is a good idea. They are silver shields should definitely cost more than 50 uh, gold. Quake got a uh, bonus versus infantry of plus four and minus 50 multiplayer cost. This should make him more attractive. People usually bring Skrulk just because he's good in melee. He's okay in melee and he also has spells in Libra Bubonicus, so like. Well, why would you bring Queek when you can uh, get Skrulk, who isn't really even that expensive with all this stuff on him, which will give you a bunch of summons, a bunch of damage-dealing damage dealing abilities, and a decent uh, melee fire. So I still don't think there's going to be enough. Skrulk is just too good, but we'll see. Because uh, the Libra Bubonicus actually did get nerfed, and I'll show you, and that's at the bottom, and I'll show you all that in a minute. Warlord on a Bonebreaker, minus 50 multiplayer costs. That should make him more attractive. Synagogues with Throwing Axes got some ammo removed and removed splash attacks. This should help because Synagogues with Throwing Axes are just so cost effective and I, I do like this change. Remove the splash damage on Synagogues as well. Lore Masters of Hoeth, minus 50 multiplayer costs. These guys are never brought so hopefully this will make them a little bit more attractive. Probably not going to be enough to actually make people want to bring them. Help Hit Abomination, minus 3 bonus versus large and plus 4 melee attack. Plague Priest and Plague Furnace, minus 2 melee defense. I like that. I think the large chariots and large like large creatures in general shouldn't have that great of a melee defense just because they're so large and especially against uh, small units I don't know if they can like make it specific against small units that they have lower melee defense but uh, yeah I mean it's really big and it just can't protect itself from being hit all around when it's completely surrounded and that's my thinking on that skink chief plus 50 multiplayer cost on foot and pterodon I like that they still have too much ammo I think uh, Rev was still done, plus 25 multiplayer costs, that's good. Feral Cold Ones, plus 4 charge bonus, people probably still won't bring them. Feral but still a done, plus 4 charge bonus, plus 4 melee defense, I doubt people will bring them still. Questing Knights got plus 2 AP damage in uh, lieu of base damage, and can now use the Lance Formation ability, and I'll go over the Lance Formation ability as well. Uh, it got changed. Gilgarians can now use the Lance Formation ability. Chameleon Kings, minus 2 melee defense, I like that. Chameleon Skinks are just too good at uh, killing things that should kill them, like like Cav. Chaos Warriors all got plus 3 morale. Makes sense to me, they kind of broke easily. Chaos Warriors got plus 2 charge bonus. Orc Biggins plus 1 charge bonus. Cannon Raids plus 2 charge bonus. Kazarek plus 2 melee defense. Knights of the Blazing Sun got minus 50 multiplayer cost. I like that. That helps mix, mix up for the fact that uh, Gladlands are so cost and effective. Silver Helms with shields plus 6 charge bonus. That's okay, Silver Helms are probably still going to be pretty useless. Horned Ones, plus one charge bonus. Cold One Dread Knights, plus two melee defense. Still units that you'll probably rarely see. Cetra, Chariot of the Gods, minus 100 multiplayer cost. Makes sense to me, you never saw his chariot, just because of how expensive it is. Streaming Cold Skull Catapult is minus 50 multiplayer cost. It is, uh, it still can't do any damage, it seems to me, so I don't think that'll really matter. You shot the great bows, minus one ammo, and chosen the gods, minus one ammo. Now, I think these guys need a bigger nerf than that, to be quite honest, because they can just, they just deal out so much damage, I think they need an accuracy nerf or something. The Kimrian Wash Sphinx got minus eight charge bonus and minus 200 health, so that's a step in the right direction, I think. A little bit too powerful. And then, uh, here's a good one. Rune of Wrath and Ruin 
in Master Rune and Wrath and Rune are no longer infinite uses. They did get their range increase, but now they have max uses of 4 on the regular Rune of Wrath and Rune, and of 3 on the Rune of Wrath of Master Rune of Wrath and Rune. So now we got some ability changes here. Dragon Breast plus 7% projectile damage and projectile AP damage. Slightly improved actually is Star Dragon Breast, so that makes sense. Lance Formation. Remove negative stat modifiers. So this could be big. So let's go into the game here and grab Bretonia and see what Lance Formation does. Grab Grail Knight here and Lance Formation now gives plus 50% deceleration, plus 50% acceleration, plus 36% charge bonus, and plus 24% charge speed. So there's no negatives to using this anymore. So me and Dov Plays decided to do some test with Lance Formation. And uh, let's let's go watch that. So we're going to try questing knights, grail knights, and grail guardians against uh, a bunch of units that you would probably use them against. So we got chaos warriors with great weapons, uh, chosen with great weapons, and chaos knights with lances. So over on this side, we're going to have our grail knights go up against chaos knights with lances, and we got three in regular formation and three in uh, what is that called? Lance formation. Over here, we got. A bunch of chosen. Yeah, chosen all across the line, and we got some Grail Guardians in Lance, and two not in Lance, and some Questing Knights in Lance, and two of them in Lance, and one not in Lance. We also have over here. We got a bunch of Chaos Warriors, and we're testing out Grail Guardians in Lance, two Grail Guardians without Lance, and two Questing Knights, and one Questing Knight without Lance. So let's go ahead and speed up, and I just want to show you all the results here. So over on the uh, side of the cavalry, let's let them finish out their battle here. Honestly, it can go any way here. As you can see, Chaos Knights with Lances, if RNG favors them, can actually beat Grail Guardians in some cases. But in most cases, the Grail Guardians are going to win. So let's go ahead and pause it here and see how we did. So these three were in Lance Formation. And as you can see, one of, them, one of the uh, Chaos Knights with Lances won. And... Two of the Grail Knights just barely won, and the Chaos Knights of Lance just barely won as well. Over here in Lance Formation, it doesn't look like it made a difference, to be quite honest. Their health is about the same, maybe slightly lighter, higher on the Grail, Guard, Grail Knights in Lance. But uh, yeah, I think overall, it's not too much of a difference. So, against Cavalry, it's not much of a difference if you leave them in sustained combat. Now, these Chaos Knights with Lances over here actually did beat these Grail Knights, just like the unlanced Grail Knights. So, against Cavalry, it's in sustained combat at least, it's not going to make a difference. So, let's go ahead and speed up over here and see the results. Alright. So, against the Chosen. So, these guys were fighting Grail Guardians, and Lance Formation was right here. And as you can see, the Lance Formation did about the same, or yeah, pretty much the same in uh, in combat with the compared to the non-Lance Formation. So, and it's pretty much the same across the board. These Questing Knights over here are doing about the same as the Questing Knights that were not in Lance Formation. So, the tell of the story here is... If you leave your guys in sustained combat, it's not going to be effective because Lance Formation is mostly a charge bonus uh, buff. So if you charge around, it's probably going to be useful, but if you just charge your guys straight up then and then leave them in combat, because you can't do that with uh, Grail Guardians and Questing Knights. They are meant to be in sustained combat. It's not going to make a difference. So if you intend to leave your cavalry in sustained combat, do not... You don't need to use uh, Lance Formation. And in fact, I suggest you don't because it'll help get an easier surround on you. So that's going to be all for that test. Let's go back into the patch notes. Besides that, Murderous Prowess and Murderous Mastery got their vigor changed from 30% to 18%. I feel like that's a good change. Murderous Mastery and Prowess are kind of OP. Old Rumblers got their. Vigor nerfed to plus 9%, that's half from plus 18%. Regrowth costs more by 1, Fate of Unit costs more by 2, 
I understand the fate of Buna. Not sure why they did that to regrowth. I didn't feel like it needed it, but that's okay. Uh, Savage Dominion got plus four mana cost, which I think is a good change. Fiery Convocation, uh, regular cast and overcast got increased in cost, but those spells are just still probably useless. And here's a good nerf. Libra Bubonicus minus five seconds duration. So that's good. Libra Bubonicus just does so much damage, and I like this change because, uh, Decreasing its uh, duration is going to decrease its damage by quite a lot. So, overall, I think these patch notes were a step in the right direction. Do I think it's enough? No. I mean, it's still going to be unbalanced, but like I said with the last patch notes, it's a step in the right direction. And, uh, you know, we'll get there, guys. We'll get to a place where the game is in a good place of balance. I felt like, besides maybe the... What's it called? Fine final transmutation and the what what was the spell in warhammer 1 that was really op from life it was the uh kind of like vortex spell you cast it on the ground there were a bunch of roots i don't remember what it's called but besides those two spells and chaos regiments were now being a little bit powerful i thought warhammer 1 was in a really good state at the end of its life cycle so hopefully we can reach that uh that kind of state before the end of warhammer 2's life cycle but, you know, we can only hope for that and uh, give our feedback to CA. But anyway, guys, this is going to be John Ton for Total Bro Hammer, signing out.